What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I've spent the last several years exploring the European Alps and I want to show you my favorite places. So here's my Alps Top 30. There's no place on earth that I love more than the European Alps. From the jagged peaks of the Dolomites to Switzerland's countless mountains, there's just something alluring about the Alps that I hope you all can experience in person. Let's start this video off in Grindelwald. When you think of the Alps, this is it. Swiss chalets and green pastures and mountains everywhere you look. I've been here several times over the years and it never ceases to blow my mind. The village is overlooked by the massive Eiger Mountain. It's just hard to fathom how big it is. In Grindelwald, there's just so much to do. I was just there recently and me and my brother rented some e-bikes and rode them up the mountain. We made it to the famous first cliff walk and check that out. Then we rode to the Lake Bakalsi. I mean, I can't recommend Grindelwald enough. There's just something magical about this Swiss village. Now after, we're gonna visit Lemonsi. This was one of my favorite hikes I've done in the Alps. You start by taking up a cable car, and when you reach the top, you're gonna go through a three kilometer tunnel through the mountain. I believe it was originally built by a company who made the dam, and now you could walk through it. We reached the end, and we arrived at the lake. It's this striking turquoise color surrounded by an amphitheater of mountain walls. Now the hike to the top was freaking hard. It's very steep and felt like it went on forever. But after about an hour, we made it to the iconic viewpoint. It's this rocky peninsula that gives you a perfect view of the reservoir below. I just had a blast running around up there. I mean, there's no greater feeling than running free in the mountains. There's also a mountain hut up there where you can get some food and drink after such a long hike. On the way back down, I just couldn't believe the views. It's definitely one of my favorite yet difficult hikes I've done in the Alps. When we got back to the tunnel, we took a stairway down to the dam and you can walk across it. I mean, it's crazy how concave the dam is. It really makes you appreciate modern engineering. After, we're going for a swim in Valle Versasca. Located in the Italian region of Switzerland, Valle Versasca is famous for having this medieval bridge that goes over some of the clearest river water in the world. I've been there many times now, and every single time, I'm just baffled by the beauty of this place. The water is crystal clear, and the bridge is a prime place to do some cliff jumping. It took me a while to build up courage to jump, but I was able to throw a gainer into the freezing cold water. Another fun thing you can do is swim in the river. I brought my goggles and I just can't believe the clarity of the water. The rocks look so cool from beneath and even though it was cold, there's just something energizing about swimming in frigid waters. After Switzerland, we're going to head over to the French Alps. Now this is definitely my favorite region in all of France. It's home to the incredibly massive Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain in all the Alps at 15,774 feet. If you want to get a close-up view to Mont Blanc without the hiking, you can visit the Agui du Midi. Now, the Agui du Midi was constructed back in 1955, and when you see it, you just can't fathom how they were able to build this on top of a mountaintop. Now, to get there, you can take a 20-minute cable car ride, which holds the world record for the highest vertical ascent by a cable car with an elevation gain of 9,000 feet. Now, when you reach the top, you'll be able to witness one of the best 360 views in all the Alps. Now, if you're into hiking, you'll have to experience the Tour du Mont Blanc. It's a roughly 170 kilometer trek that loops around Mont Blanc. You'll not only hike in France, but you'll also go through Italy and Switzerland. If you hike at a decent pace, you can expect to complete the loop in about 10 days. A beautiful town in the French Alps is Annecy. Now, Annecy is located at the foot of the Alps. It's famous for its medieval old town, and it's been nicknamed the Venice of the Alps thanks to its canals. Now, the city is just absolutely magical, but what I love about the region is Lake Annecy. It's known as one of the cleanest lakes in all of Europe, and I just love the surrounding mountains. Now, one of the crowning features of the area is the Chateau de Menthon Saint Bernard. The castle began construction back in the 13th century, and it's just hard to beat the view of this medieval castle. After, we're going to head over to Germany to visit Berchtesgaden. It's just a two-hour drive from Munich, and it's nestled in the Bavarian Alps. 
One of my favorite features of Berchtesgaden is the Watzmann Mountain. It's a uniquely shaped peak that towers over the town. It almost looks like someone took a bite out of it. One thing I love about Berchtesgaden is there's so many beautiful churches to explore. One of my favorites is the church in Ramsau. It's right next to this beautiful stream and there's this picture perfect bridge to observe the church from. Another one of my favorites is the Maria Jern Church, which offers a perfect view of the Watzmann Mountain. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Berchtesgaden was to visit Hitler's Eagle's Nest. Now I'm really fascinated with World War II history and I had to see this place for myself. Now the Eagle's Nest was built in 1939 and was given to Hitler for his 50th birthday. Now to get to the Eagle's Nest, you can take a bus up. When you get to the top, you'll walk through a deep tunnel into the mountain. When I was in there, it was just crazy to think that Hitler walked these same walls. Now at the end of the tunnel, there's a circular room that leads you into a golden elevator. Even though the Eagle's Nest and the road leading up to it cost nearly 200 million euros to make, adjusted for inflation, Hitler only visited it on 14 documented occasions. This may be because Hitler was afraid of heights and he was also scared of using the elevator. Thankfully, the Eagle's Nest wasn't destroyed in World War II and today it's a restaurant with panoramic views. Now while you're there, you can hike up some walking paths into the Berchtesgaden National Park Park, enjoying the incredible sights of this historical destination. Afterwards, we're going to head back to Berchtesgaden to visit the Lake Kunensi. Now, the lake was created by glaciers, which makes it feel like you're in a fjord you'd see in Norway or New Zealand. When I was there, we took a boat ride to the end of the lake. It cost around 15 euros and took about 50 minutes to cross the lake. Now, the first stop was to the famous St. Bartholomew's Church. We kept going and we reached the end of the lake. We then hiked about 10 minutes to reach Obersee, I mean just home to this iconic lake hut and the scenery there is just astounding, I mean the lake's so clear and it's just surrounded by massive mountain walls that are hard to explain. I mean I just had a great time enjoying the scenery around the lake, definitely gotta explore Kuningsi and Obersee while you're in Berchtesgaden. After, we're going to head to the top of Germany to visit the Zugspitze Mountain. Now with a height of 2,962 meters, easily one of the most impressive mountains in all of Germany, Zugspitze is located south of Garmisch Partenkirchen and the easiest way to reach the top of the mountain is by a cable car. It costs around 60 euros and it's one of the biggest gondolas I've ever been in. It holds several world records including the longest free span in a cable car with a distance of more than 3,000 meters. Honestly an engineering phenomenon and a little scary going up and once you reach the top you can explore the mountain station. I mean it really blew me away up there. It totally reminded me of an evil villain's lair. One thing that I thought was interesting is you can walk through this tunnel and it'll take you to the Austrian side of Zugspitze. Now from the platform on the German side you can see the summit cross. Me and my brother decided we wanted to climb to the top. The snow made it a little sketchy but we held on tight to the iron wire and climbed a ladder and made it to the cross. I mean the views were unreal up there. I mean if you go in the summertime I'm sure it's not as sketchy to summit this. Now after Zugspitze you can take the cable car down to visit the lake Ibsee. Now it's known as the Maldives of the Alps with its clear water and tree dotted islands. I mean the color of the water there is astounding. Now if you have time I definitely recommend walking along the lake. It's full of beautiful groves of trees and a perfect place to relax on the shoreline and enjoy some Bavarian nature. Now afterwards we're going to head over to Wagenbrüssi. This is one of the most scenic places in all of Bavaria. I mean I was just baffled by this place. It's this beautiful little lake nestled in the mountains and it's full of farm sheds that dot the hillside. Now the lake is overlooked by the perfectly placed Carvendel Alps. I had such a fun time exploring here. I just walked down a little dirt road to get there and it was a spectacular place to enjoy the Bavarian sunset. After we're going to visit the iconic Neuschwanstein Castle. I have to say that it is the most beautiful castle in all Europe. It's what inspired Disney's Sleeping Beauty Castle. I mean, it's just the perfect place for a princess. Now, the castle is nestled at the very tip of southern Germany. Neuschwanstein Castle is placed perfectly in the mountains with a phenomenal 360 view of the Bavarian Alps and the town below. The construction of the castle began in 1869. During World War II, the SS debated blowing up the castle to prevent it from falling into the enemy's hands, but thankfully it never happened. Today, the castle receives over 1.4 million visitors a year, so it's definitely a tourist hotspot. When I was there, we walked around the castle. 
When you're up close, you realize how huge it really is. King Ludwig had some imagination. Anyways, I found a great vantage point in the trees with a perfect view of the castle. I mean, I just can't get over the beauty of this place. I mean, it's truly something out of a Disney fairy tale. Now, another incredible spot nearby is St. Coleman's Church. It's located just a few minutes away and has a splendid view of the castle and the Bavarian Alps. Just about an hour away is the scenic Algal Alps. Situated in western Bavaria near the town of Oberstdorf, the mountains here are full of lush green slopes and beautiful alpine lakes. One of my favorites is Schrecksee with an elevation of 1,813 meters. It's the highest alpine lake in all of Germany. Now special thanks to my friends near from home for helping me out with footage. They made a great video documenting their trek up to the lake and I'll link it in the description below. Now to get to Schrecksee, it's a 15 kilometer round trip so it's definitely a challenge but the views are worth the effort. When you reach the lake, it's surrounded by a bowl of green peaks with an island in the center. It's such an incredible spot nestled in the Algal Alps. After exploring Bavaria, we're going to head over to Italy to visit the Dolomites. I spent several weeks exploring the Dolomites and I consider it to be some of the greatest days of my life. One of my favorite places in the Dolomites is Seceda. The green grass slopes contrasted with the jagged mountain ridge makes for one of the most unbelievable landscape combos in the world. Now to get to Seceda, I took two gondolas up the mountain and made it to the top. When I got there, the clouds covered half the mountain, make it for one of the best views I've ever gotten. I mean, places like this just really spark your imagination and make you feel like a kid again. I hope everyone can witness the power of Seceda at least once in a life. Now one of the most beautiful valleys in the Dolomites is Val di Funes. I remember seeing pictures of this place before I ever went to the Dolomites and I just couldn't believe it was real. The valley is home to some of Italy's most beautiful churches surrounded by scenery straight out of a fairy tale. The mountains in the back are the same mountains in Seceda, just from a different angle. When I was there, the mountains were covered by the clouds, but I still was able to witness one of the valley's most picturesque churches. Now another magical place nearby is Alpe de Susi. It's home to the largest high alpine meadow in Europe. The backdrop of the Sassolungo mountain with the farm huts creates a scene straight out of a dream. Now the mountains that you see in Alpe de Susi are called the Sassolungo group. It's one of the most impressive massives I've ever seen. When I was there, I decided to take a one-man chairlift up to the top and I was blown away by the views. I like to call this place the Black Gates of Mortar because that's what it reminded me of. Anyways, there's a little refuge on top and it's a great place to go climbing and exploring. When I got down to the bottom, I drove around the area to see if I could catch the sunset and I was able to get some of the most dramatic shots that I've ever taken. Now after, we're gonna head over to Lago di Bre. Now this is probably the most popular lake in all of Dolmites. It's a milky blue color with a backdrop of towering mountains. When I was here, I hadn't showered in days, so I decided to take a plunge in the lake. Nothing makes you feel more alive than jumping into some glacier water. If you come, you can walk around the rim of the lake or even take a boat out. I mean, it's really a special place. Another great mountain pass is the Paso Jiao. The top of the pass is located about 30 minutes outside of Cortina de Ampezzo. One of my favorite features of the pass is the view of the Ra Gusla Peak. It marks the highest point of the pass and towers over a hotel and restaurant. Now, one of the most iconic places in the Dolomites is Trecimi di Lavaredo. It's a set of three massive rock pillars that tower over the landscape. I love this area so much that I spent four days exploring here. I did one of the most epic sunrise missions of my life as I reached the top of the mountain to watch the sun slowly light up the Tre Chimi de Lavaredo rocks. There's also this incredible area I like to call Mordor because it looks like something straight out of Lord of the Rings. I stumbled upon this place by accident. I found some random tunnels that were used during World War I and had one of the most memorable sunsets of my life running around here. I mean, it's truly a magical place. After the Dolomites, we're going to head over to neighboring Slovenia to visit another fairy tale destination, Lake Bled. Now, located just a 40 minute drive outside of Ljubljana, Lake Bled is one of Europe's most scenic lakes. It's famous for its island that has a church on it. Now another one of my favorite churches in Slovenia is the Church of St. Thomas. It's located in the town of Selka and has one of the most incredible views as it's perfectly placed on a hilltop with the Alps in the distance. There's also another notable hilltop church in Jemnik that offers one of the most scenic settings. Now aside from picturesque churches and lakes, Slovenia is home to the Julian Alps. They are the tallest mountains in all of Slovenia and they remind me a lot of the Dolomites. 
Now the tallest peak of the Julian Alps is Mount Triglav. It stands at elevation of 2,864 meters. Also the river Socha is located in the Julian Alps. It's considered to be one of the most beautiful rivers in all of Europe with its crystal clear turquoise water. It reminds me a lot of Valle Versaska. After Slovenia, we're gonna head over to the Austrian Alps. I was lucky enough to spend several days road tripping Austria and I was just shocked by the beauty of the country. Now one of my favorite places I went to is the town of Gosau. It was just this little town that I stumbled upon and it had one of the most incredible backdrops of the nearby mountains. I mean it would be a dream to live there. Now just up the road from Gosau is a lake called Gosau Sea. It's this incredible spot surrounded by the impressive Dachstein Mountains. Now one incredible place there is the ladder to heaven. I tried to do it but unfortunately I didn't have the right gear. Now after it we're going to visit the nearby village of Hallstatt. Located just 20 minutes from Gosau, Hallstatt looks like it should be in a fairy tale. It's rumored to be the inspiration of the town Arendelle from the Disney film Frozen and I can totally see the resemblance. Hallstatt began as a salt mine nearly 7,000 years ago and today the village is one of Austria's most popular tourist attractions. While you're there you can walk the cobblestone alleys and marvel at the 16th century alpine houses. I mean just such an enchanting place. If you like mountains you'll love the Grossglockner High Alpine Road. It's the highest road in Austria at 2,504 meters. When I was there, I went to the park during sunrise. It cost about $35 to enter and I drove up the road. I was just stunned by the view of the surrounding mountains. While you're there, you can also visit the Pastore Glacier, which is just a short drive over. It's the biggest glacier in Austria. I love the lake and the contrast of the glacier between the gray waters. After Austria, we're gonna head over to the mountains of Appenzell. Located in eastern Switzerland, these mountains quickly became one of my favorite places I've ever been to. It's home to massive jagged mountains that look like something out of Lord of the Rings. To get up the mountain, I took a gondola and then hiked about an hour to reach a mountain hut hotel on the top. Me and my buddy Danny decided to stay the night at the hotel so we could watch the sunset. We got all settled in and then we ventured off to get the perfect spot. The clouds were covering the sky so we only had like 15 minutes of sunlight to get the shot. Danny whipped out his FPV and we got some of the most incredible shots I've ever seen. I have to say this is my top 5 sunsets of my life and I can't believe the beauty of these mountains. They're just so massive and green. It's what dreams are made of. After it, we're going to head over to Oshinensi. Now this has got to be one of the most impressive alpine lakes in all of Switzerland. It's truly difficult to grasp how massive the mountains are that surround the lake. It's located about a 45 minutes drive from Interlaken. Now to get to the lake you can hike or take a gondola. Now when you're at the lake you can walk around the rim and take a dip if you can handle the cold water or you can also take out a paddle boat. Another great thing to do is hike above the lake. It's a rather steep climb but when you reach the top you'll be able to get a bird's eye view of Oceanessi. One of my favorite spots was this place where there are these two trees that are perfectly placed as they overlook the blue waters of the lake. Now after it, we're gonna visit the Alech Glacier. Now located in the Bernese Alps, the Alech Glacier is over 23 kilometers long, making it the longest glacier in Switzerland. I mean, just so freaking huge. When I got to the top, it was just hard to fathom the scale of this glacier, and I found the uniform dark lines of shattered rock so interesting. I met up with one of my buddies, Gemographic, on top. He has some of my favorite travel videos on Switzerland, and I'll link his channel in the description below. When you're up at the top, you can enjoy a meal at the restaurant, or you can hike to the cross on Egeshorn Peak to get a panoramic view of the glacier. Now at the very end of Alesh Glacier is the Jungfrau Jak. Me and my buddies decided to take Europe's highest train to the top. Now normally the tickets in summertime cost around $240, but we got the early bird special, so it was half off. We rode the train up the mountain. Halfway, we made a pit stop and we were able to see the glacier. There were also some mountaineers taking a little break before they ascended the mountain. After the pit stop, we got back on the train and made it to the top. When you reach the final stop, you'll get off the train and go through some tunnels. It was a little confusing to me. Anyways, we made it to the ice plateau and we were able to get an incredible view of the glacier below. After we went on top of the Sphinx Observatory to get some more amazing views. Now one of the coolest parts of Young for Yak is the glacier tunnels. You're able to walk through these tunnels carved out of ice and surprisingly it wasn't too cold or slippery. While a trip to Young for Yak is expensive, I think everyone should do it at least once in their life. Now our next destination is Lauterbrunnen. This is possibly the most beautiful village on earth. It's a valley of over 72 waterfalls and it's what inspired J.R.R. Tolkien's Rivendell. Now to get to Lauterbrunnen, it's about a two hour car ride from Zurich. 
you'll just have an incredible time just walking around the village and marveling at all the beauty. When I was there, I found this little park right at the base of the town's waterfall. I also checked out their local store co-op and got some Swiss essentials of Coke and chocolate. I and mean, gosh, I just love this place. While you're there, it's hard to believe it even exists. Right above Lauterbrunn is the village of Wengen. Now founded back in the 13th century, I believe Wengen is home to the most beautiful view in the world as it overlooks the valley below. Now the village is home to around 1300 residents year round, but it gets many visitors during the summer and winter months. Now to get to Wengen, you can't drive there, it's one of Switzerland's car free villages, but you can either hike or take one of the most scenic train rides. It costs around $13 round trip and winds up the mountain. The views on the train ride will take your breath away. Now once you get to Wengen, you can walk around its paths and just marvel at all the Swiss chalets and incredible views of the valley below. Now after it, we're going to visit the village of Murren. Now similar to Wengen, you can't drive to Murren. You gotta take a gondola from Stechelberg. Now the city is just enchanting. It's filled with Swiss chalets and incredible views. The main reason I wanted to go to Murren is to do the iconic Via Ferrata. I rented some gear at the Intersport store for about $25 and I was all ready to go. Before you start, you walk through this tunnel. It's a good initiation and gets you pumped or nervous for what's to come. You then follow the path and it's pretty chill for the first bit. You just walk through a little forest, but then you get to the cliffs. There was this base jump platform to jump into the valley below. Just standing on it made my stomach drop. Anyways, after that, the Via Ferrata gets a little wild. My favorite part is this section that goes across this sheer cliff face with the thousand foot drop right below you. I mean, it's perfectly safe as long as you're clipped in to the iron wire with your gear. I mean, just so exhilarating. I went back and did it two more times because I liked it so much. My camera doesn't give it justice. The combination of the thousand foot drop with the views is unforgettable. After the cliff section, we continued on the trail. The next obstacle was a wire tight rope across the waterfall. It was a little sketch, but not too bad. And the final obstacle is a bridge that goes over a deep canyon. This was honestly the scariest part for me because it was kind of shaky towards the middle. And the thousand foot plus drop is intimidating, but nonetheless, I finished and made it to the town of Gimmelwald. It took me about two hours to do and it was just so freaking fun. Another incredible place to visit in the area is Schilthorn. It's an iconic mountain peak above Marin. Now the lift tickets were on the pricey side, around $125 a person. And you take up several lifts through the clouds until you reach the top. The Schilthorn is famous for being featured in the 1969 James Bond film. There's a lot of 007 memorabilia on top. The views are jaw dropping up there. You get clear views of the Jungfrau, Monk, and Eiger Mountains. You can enjoy a meal in the rotating restaurant that completes a full rotation every 45 minutes. We followed a trail that led us on the ridge. We saw a guy preparing to paraglide, and we found some little huts to shelter from the wind. The weather conditions change so fast up there. One second it will be clear, and then a few minutes later it will be covered in clouds. I mean, gotta love those high altitude conditions. Now, after exploring Schilthorn, you can take the gondola to the lower station of Berg. There's incredible views and a place to have a mill. There's also the Thrill Walk attraction, which has several fun obstacles, whether it's walking on a tightrope or crawling through a wire tube with quite a drop below. It's sure to get your adrenaline pumping. For our final destination, we're going to explore Zermatt. It's a charming village shadowed over by the daunting Matterhorn Mountain, and there's just something magical about this place. Now, the city is full of shops and restaurants, including my favorite, McDonald's. Now, one thing I love is how the glacial river runs through the town. It's a distinct grayish turquoise color, and it's one of the best places to get views of the Matterhorn. Now, one thing you gotta do while you're there is take the Gonagrat Railway. It starts in Zermatt and takes you up to 3,100 meters to enjoy some of the best views of the Matterhorn. I'm not going to lie, it's freaking expensive. It costs about $140 a person, but it's a once in a lifetime experience that you got to do if you're there. We got up super early to take the first train and climbed up the mountain. I was just baffled by the views. Now we got off at the Rotenboden station and I was just so freaking excited. I've been wanting to come here for years and it lived up to the hype. There are two lakes that offer some of the best views of the Matterhorn, and if the conditions are just right, you can see a perfect reflection of the real famous peak. I got super lucky, it was a clear, calm morning. I was just running around up there, it made me feel like a kid again. Not only is the views magical, but there are some of the cutest sheep I've ever seen. They have the curliest hair and twisted horns, and look like an animal you would find in a fantasy novel. Now after running around, we took the train to the top of the railway to the Gornergrat. It's one of the coolest hotels that I'd love to stay at one day. 
It reminds me of an evil villain's hideout. Once again, you'll get incredible views of the Matterhorn and the massive glacier below. I mean, I just couldn't recommend the Gornograt Railway enough. It's something you gotta do. Now, if you wanna get up close and personal to the Matterhorn, I'd recommend you take the gondola up to Schwarzi. It costs about $60 a person, and you get on the lift in Zermatt. It then takes you up to this little mountain lake called Schwarzi, and from there, you can hike up to the base of the Matterhorn. And this was probably one of my favorite things we did in Zermatt. You get a chance to see the Matterhorn up close and it's just so freaking incredible. I truly think mountains give off some sort of energy because I'm always amped and excited when I'm near them. There's just so much magic in the Alps. Well, that is it for my Alps Top 30. It's such an incredible part of the world and I hope you can visit there soon. Let me know where your favorite place is in the Alps in the comments below. I also started a Spanish channel if any of you guys prefer watching my videos in Spanish. Anyways, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.